Today we're going to be unboxing my new iPad Pro. We are just going to be doing this on my art desk with all this paint marks on it but I'm going to be reviewing some of the accessories I got with it along with my iPad so I hope you guys will stick around for that. The very first thing I got was my Spigen Urban Fit case and it's really cool. I love the textures on it. One of the best things about it is that it charges my Apple Pencil with the case on which is surprisingly hard to find with the cases that I was looking at online. And the magnets on it are really strong too which is also a bonus. The only weird thing about it is the pencil holder is on the other side so it doesn't charge when you're storing it. I really wish it was just on the right side so it charges at the same time as it's being protected but it's really pretty and I also like the color for it. This is a very solid case overall. The next thing I got was my Royal Kludge keyboard and I love this thing. It makes me want to learn to type better which was my main motivation for getting a keyboard in the first place because I'm 25 years old and I just am the worst typer I know. <laughs> so I got this so I can practice but, but it's also just a very cool keyboard. It has a lot of different light modes on it and the typing experience is so satisfying. It also just automatically connects to my iPad so as long as I know both this and my Bluetooth on my iPad is on, I know the keyboard is connected and I don't really need to worry about connecting it every single time. One of the worst things about it is just it's so hard to set up. I don't know if this is just because I don't have much experience with keyboards overall. But the box didn't come with a lot of instructions and the QR code for the site that was inside it did not work. So I had to do some digging online, mostly on Reddit to even get it to work the way I wanted it to work. But the good thing about this is that there's a lot of information you can find online for it. But I am a novice so I'm sure most of you guys won't have too much trouble setting it up. But it really is just an, a great keyboard. I love the way it feels. And I even ended up using it to type up my notes, which is something that I'm not used to. I just prefer handwriting everything, and which is what I used to do before. But the reason why that really came in handy this time was because the screen protector. And this is the ESR matte screen protector, but it really made me not want to write on my iPad with my pencil anymore. And it's marketed as having a paper feel, but really doesn't feel like paper. The only thing I can compare it to is my Elecom matte screen protector that I had on before. I haven't tried the paper like yet. But that one had so much texture, the Alicom one. And I actually hurt my fingertips when I used it before. I'm not sure if it's just because I have tender fingertips, I, which I didn't think so. But that one really felt great when I was writing on it. I just felt like the texture was very similar to my sketchbooks, which I like to sketch on. Writing on it, it just felt really great. But yeah, for the texture on that one, while I was scrolling with my fingers, it felt like it was too much. But for this one, the ESR one, it doesn't hurt my fingers, but <laughs> the texture on it also did not feel like paper. Both this one and the Alicom one altered the look of my screen. It made it look like it had a grainy cast over everything. But I was surprised that didn't find it being that much of an issue. I actually really like the look of my iPad right now. I love that it's resistant to fingerprints and so I don't have to clean it that often. And it also doesn't leave that many scratches on it, which I was expecting, but it isn't that bad. My main issue with this one is just the sound it makes. I'm, I know I've heard people say that they think it's satisfying and it sounds really cool. 
but to me and I'm, and I'm trying really hard not to exaggerate but it really sounds like nails on a chalkboard I got goosebumps when in the worst way when I'm using it and I think it's very much a personal thing I'm sure a lot of people will find it satisfying and will make them want to draw on their iPad more and so I'm keeping it on the video because I want to see what you guys think of the sound but I really did anticipate this because I, while I was watching other people's videos for paper like I didn't like the sound of it at all but I was hoping that this one was gonna be different because the Alicom one didn't bother me this much but I'm glad that I anticipated that and got two tempered gas screen protectors with it so now I know that I can just switch it when I need to but just for this ESR matte screen protector I love the look of it I like that it's fingerprint resistant and I just like the look of how it makes my iPad look but I don't like the writing experience on it which is a huge bummer for me by the way the artwork that I'm doing in the background is done in clip studio paint I'm starting to do all of my more finished artworks on it like all of my illustrations but i still use my procreate sometimes they're usually for my sketches so now the ipad itself is just so thin which always surprises me every time it's out of the case it's actually the same footprint as my old one the 2018 one that one was never out of its case. I felt like I only had it for a few minutes before I put it in this unicorn beetle case and it's that case is just so big and it added a lot of weight and overall dimension to the iPad so it took me a while to adjust to the dimensions of this one. It's just so thin that I actually didn't use it for almost a week while I was waiting for my case because I was just so scared that I might drop it. I was waiting for for this year's WWDC before I decided on which iPad would be the best for me. I was really excited about the newest one having the M1 chip, but after finding out that we weren't going to be having um, Mac apps on it, I just decided to go with this one because I also really loved my 2018 one. I wouldn't have replaced it if it wasn't for the storage being so low on that one. So I got its older sister instead. This is the 2020 version and it's, it honestly doesn't feel like that much of an upgrade from my old one. I don't think it's that big of a jump to go from the 2018 one to the 2020 version, but I do think that the latest one with the M1 chip looks amazing. I, the screen on that one just looks so great, but because I haven't seen the screen on that one and I really loved my older one, it really feels, feels like I'm not missing anything on this one. This one just seems so perfect for what I use it for. I feel like the iPad right now is just such a good tablet for, and especially for artists. It's just so well optimized that it makes a lot of things work so well that you really don't even think about them. They just work for you, like drawing on it. It just feels great. It doesn't feel like I'm drawing on a tablet. There's not much of a distance from the Apple Pencil to your actual drawing. And it only feels like you're drawing on a different surface. I actually like drawing on the glass. I was just, I was just trying out this matte one. I don't think there's any lag from when you use the pencil to when your writing shows up. I think the iPad overall is just an amazing device for that. Obviously I got this one because I'm editing on it and I'm drawing on it but I feel like if we were just using it for note taking and consuming media. Even their iPad Air looks great and weirdly I also like the dimensions on this one. I thought it would be weird especially when you're watching movies on it there's just a lot of gray bars on top and at the bottom of your videos because of the aspect ratio of it but it's great for when you're multitasking and note taking at the same time and also it's just so smooth because almost all of the apps that you can get on it is designed to run really well on the iPad so most of the apps that you can that you can download just run so smoothly which i feel like is a double-edged sword 
on one end you're missing out on getting more quote unquote professional apps on it but the apps that you do get like procreate and luma fusion just runs extremely well and even on my older ipad which had really low storage and i'm not sure about the ram on it but even on that one and it being a couple of years old it still runs those apps perfectly the only time that i felt like it's just starting to slow down on me was using clip studio paint on it for a long time and that's with all of the things that i have on that old ipad it's just so full of things and app that i use it for and it and it even has all of the learning apps that i have for my toddler so i was asking a lot for that ipad and it still ran great the only except for clip studio paint which is just packed with so many features that it, it kind of makes sense so on this one everything just runs they just run smoothly i've been using clip studio paint on it for a couple of weeks i think and it's been really smooth and i also have a few more apps on this one too so in conclusion this ipad is great it's one of the only expensive things that i own that i don't think i'm paying too much for I can't say the same way for a lot of my things, I can't even say the same way for my iPhone but the iPad is my main computer, I do art on it, I edit my videos on it and I, I just do everything on it so it honestly feels like a great deal for me personally. I don't think everyone can say the same thing. Like I said before, if you were just using it for note-taking and consuming media, maybe the iPad Air is the better option for you. But for someone who uses it as their main computer and who does, who does artworks on it, um, video editing, I feel like it's, it's even a bargain for what you're paying for. It just does so much and it's a great tablet overall for that. So that is it for what I think of the iPad Pro and for all of the accessories that I got with it. Thank you guys for watching and I will be seeing you again soon.